a bent axle, a bent leaf spring. The axle I ordered didn't fit. I had to repackage it and ship it back. And I'm actually glad that all this happened. This is a 6x10 cargo trailer. And most 6x10 cargo trailers don't come with brakes. When we first got this trailer and built a camper package into it, um, we, didn't, we didn't feel a need for brakes. And we towed it all over the western half of the U.S. and, and didn't feel a need for brakes. But lately, uh, things have changed because we've added a few things, like a second propane tank, five gallon water jugs on each side, a bike rack and a heavy e-bike, not to mention batteries and other water jugs and just numerous other things that added to the weight of the trailer. Until now, when we're going down a long mountain road, steep mountain road, um, we're tending to overheat the brakes in the Yukon, and that's telling me the trailer needs brakes. I could have gone with a brake kit, but um, this tire behind me is wearing out on the inside, which tells me that the axle is tweaked a little bit. It probably happened when we broke that leaf spring and the axle uh, was pinned to the rear on the other side. I think it bent the axle a little bit. Uh, maybe not so much as you'd notice until you look at tire wear. So we decided instead of going with just a kit, just putting brakes on both sides of this axle, that we would replace the whole axle. And cost-wise, it was about $300 more just to put on the whole new axle. Besides, our axle is rusty and pitted. It's time. So we did some careful research and we came up with this 3,500 pound TK axle. Uh, ordered it online, just showed up today. So let the fun begin. Okay, slight change of plans. I was going to install this axle myself. In fact, I even went out and bought a brand new floor jack, a couple more jack stands. I was all hyped and ready. And then, Lynch, and then Linda mentioned, what about Swain's spring service? You like them. So here I am in front of Swain's right now, and uh, they're gonna install this axle for me today and save me a lot of trouble. Yeah, I just carried it down here on the bike rack. It's all set to go. Yeah, these guys do really good work here. Uh, so um, I feel really relaxed about doing this. It's funny, when Linda and I broke our leaf spring down in Nevada, oh, year before last or something like that, I don't remember, but we had that broken leaf spring replaced in Cedar City, uh, Utah. And when we got back here, I get an email from Swain's and I'd never done business with them before. And they said, they said, uh, bring it in, we need to replace the other side. <laughs> so that was funny. It turned out he was, he's a subscriber to our channel. So, and they're the nicest folks. So they're gonna get this done today. So easy for me. Well, that didn't go as planned at all. It turned out really bad. <laughs> Let me explain. Well, this is the axle all wrapped up and ready to be shipped back. Yeah, I ordered the wrong one was close but no cigar there's mounting pads that are welded you can't see them now they're all wrapped up underneath the the axle that line up with the springs on the trailer and I thought I measured it and yeah they looked like they were kind of little narrow for 70 but I thought well just the swing of the just the movement in the in the leaf springs will allow for that turns out the axle on this trailer is 69 inches between the spring centers and this axle is 70 inches now they don't sell an axle that's 69 inches between the spring centers what you got to do is you have to order an axle with the uh with the mounting pads not welded on and your spring shop has to weld those on for you to match your trailer i didn't know that yeah, even though I noticed that there was a half inch difference on either side, I just thought that was me because um, I tried to find a 69 inch uh, spring center axle and there wasn't anything available. I didn't know about ordering them without the pads welded on. Now they couldn't cut these pads off and re-weld them because they were too close to the welds and they said that would be uh, potentially too weak and I agree with them. So yeah, this axle is getting sent back. So what did I do? Well, Swain's, being the good guys that they are, they straightened my axle. It had a slight, just a, just a slight bend. You couldn't see it, but they, they straightened it 
so that my tires would wear evenly. And they actually re found a bad leaf spring again, and they replaced a bad uh, 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 leaf spring that was bent a little bit. So I got that done. So what am I gonna do now? I'm gonna order a brake kit. So that's where we're going on this video. Yeah, it's a dark, foggy morning and I couldn't wait to get out here and get started. It uh, poured down rain all day yesterday. I mean, the entire day. Got record, record rainfall yesterday. Anyways, this is easy. Let me show you. About the hardest thing for installing trailer brakes is just running the wire, and this took me all of about an hour, including wiring the uh, seven pin plug at the front of the hitch. Now, I decided to run the wire on the outside of the axle and secure it this way. The other way to do it is to run it on the inside of the axle through these holes here. But these axles bounce up and down violently and I didn't want to have the wire unsecured inside the axle so it's just getting flailed around and beaten to death. So I ran it on the outside where I could keep an eye on it. This is the opposite side. You can see that I just ran it along the frame, secured it with self-tapping screws up to the V-nose. The wire is grounded in two places. Right here I cut the ground wire and I um, screwed it to the frame. Uh, there's something important I need to tell you about this. And then it continues up into the uh, seven pin plug, that's it. That was real easy, it just uh, fastens inside there with a crimp on eye connector, both the ground wire and the trailer brake wire. The thing I need to tell you about that ground is this is an, an aluminum frame trailer and those crimp on connectors that you use on the end of your wires are actually uh, chromium plated uh, copper, but the, or a plated copper. But the thing is you never wanna have any copper coming in contact with an aluminum frame trailer. If it's a steel frame trailer, have at it. Just sand it down through the paint and go ahead and attach your ground. On an aluminum frame trailer, you never wanna have copper come in contact with aluminum because it just creates a battery right there and it'll eat a hole right through the aluminum. So make sure you put a stainless steel washer between the um, electrical connector and the aluminum itself. This is a 3,500 pound Lippert axle and Lippert, Dexter, TK, they're all about the same. This is what you're gonna see when you open it up. This is what your uh, wheel bolted to. Knock off the hub here, like that. Remove the cotter pin. Like that. Back off the axle nut. Yeah, they're not tight, folks. They're, they're loose. Pop this off and it'll, the bearing will come out the outside like this. There's your bearing. There's another bearing inside. We don't need to worry about that because we're not going to reuse this. And now we're down to the axle here, the uh, spindle. And uh, you'll see these, you should have these four mounting holes in the back. And that's what our brake drums are going to mount to. This is what your brake kit looks like. I ordered my kit from Southwest Wheel and I ordered the Pro Kit, which is supposed to have a better quality drum and better wheel bearings. However, they sent me four inner wheel bearings and no outers, so <laughs> uh, I had to go buy a couple outer bearings. But I've already packed the bearings and I've installed the inner bearing in the wheel here, in the drum, and I've uh, already put the seal in here and you just tap that gently in evenly until it's flush. So what do you get? You got your drum, you got your bearings, you got your um, brake backing plate with everything installed. This is how it comes, just like this. It comes with uh, uh, the proper uh, nuts and lock washers and everything and cotter pin you need to reinstall it. And you should have two inner bearings and two outer bearings. You get one set like this per side. This happens to be the left side. You can tell the left side from the right side two ways. Um, first of all, the front shoe is shorter than the rear shoe. This is long, this is short, so that makes this the front. The magnet here goes on the bottom, so we know this is bottom. So this being the front, this being bottom, makes this the left 
um, backing plate. And also this control arm in here uh, needs to be on the front. So this means it's a front, this means it's a front, and this is a bottom. That makes this the left side. Over here you can see the short shoe here and the control arm here. Uh, that makes this the right side. Just line those four studs up with the four holes like that. You've got four lock washers and four nuts. And the nuts are American. They're 11 sixteenths on this kit. I don't know what the torque is on these, but they've got really strong lock washers on them. Just run them down tight. Starting to see how easy all this is. It's really not bad at all. Um, the whole brake job in an afternoon, easy. Okay, there's two wires that come out of your brake. They're both green. It doesn't matter which way you hook them up. Um, the white wire is uh, on an RV or trailer is always ground, but it doesn't matter here where you hook them up. I ran number 12 wire back to this point from the front hitch. It looks like this is number 14 coming out of the brake here. If you're using crimp connectors like these, it pays to have crimp connector pliers to crimp them down. Don't use vice grips, it doesn't do a proper crimp. Make sure when you crimp these, you're only crimping wire and you're not getting the insulation stuffed up too far in there so you're crimping insulation and not getting a, a proper connection. Now what I like to do is wrap this neatly with some electrical tape. And then I like to seal that electrical tape with liquid tape. Just put it on the outside of the whole thing, seal it all up. That's it for the electrical on this side. This drum comes, it's got kind of an oily finish inside. You gotta clean that all out. Just use brake cleaner and clean the drum. Also clean this face here, cause this is the face that that magnet rides on. So I got it all cleaned up, no oil. Yeah, you guys, it really is this easy. Get the bearing seated up in there. Put the washer on. Get the nut back on there. I like to snug this nut down just to make sure it's seated, not too tight, and then back it off because from here it goes finger tight. Just got to make sure that um, hole lines up for the cotter pin. If it doesn't line up, back it off. It's okay to have a little play in your hub here. That's what I ran into right there. I don't like the cotter pins they sent. They look a little thin. So I'll be replacing those. Okay, once you get to this point, put your grease gun on here. Pump this full of grease. It's got to fill that whole uh, cavity inside there. It's going to take a bunch of grease, but go ahead and do that at this point. Put your hub cap on there. Uh, Put your tire back on and you're done on this side. I pumped grease in there until grease just appeared around the bearing there. That was it. Okay, everything is exactly the same on the other opposite side of the trailer here, except you have the extra wire that comes in from the front hitch. Uh, and that's it. But I'll show you how to hook that up here in just a second. Okay, on this side, what I did is I brought the main leads together, the, the white from the other side, then the black from the other side, and then the white and the black from the front of the trailer, and then a pigtail here. I'll explain that in a second. 
but I soldered these together and then I'll be putting this cap on here on both of these. I'll snug that down. Then I'm going to tape that and use the liquid electric tape on this also. That's to make sure that the continuity is good from the front of the trailer to here and over to the other, other side. And then this pigtail here will come up here and attach to the two green wires, just like on the other side. And once again, these green wires, there is no plus and minus. It doesn't matter which way you hook them up. And that'll take care of that. All right, that's all sealed up nicely. Okay, these trailer brakes are self-adjusting, so all I need to do is uh, apply the brakes six or eight times, and they'll bring themselves up to where they need to be. So the only thing left to do now is to hitch up the trailer and take it out and adjust the electric brake controller uh, to set it just exactly where we want it. Well, it's finally finished. It's all done. Brakes on the trailer. And the purpose of the video ended up being just showing you <laughs> how easy it is to install your own brakes.